You are good. Welcome to MMA FanCast. My name's Luke. I'm joined by a legendary, uh, a legendary fighter, fighter who's now the coach of Indio Dojo. I am joined by Danilo Indio Villefort. Danilo, welcome to the show. Hey, what's up, brother? Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's an honor. I always love watch your show, and uh, I appreciate to be here. Yo, you, you do a great job. Like, yeah, you're going to do great. I see you doing real good in the MMA scenario in the future. Well, I appreciate the compliment to start off the show. You can come back anytime you want. Uh, one, of the, one of the reasons why I hope you've been watching the show, and it's very kind of you to be watching the show, is because you've had several of your fighters fighting out of your gym on the show because several of them fought at 247 Fighting Championships back in May and several more I'm sure will be on the cards coming up in August for 247 Fighting Championships. So let's jump in and talk a little bit about your gym. Uh, you started Indio Dojo in Pittsburgh four years ago after, uh, well, right towards the end of your career. What led you to want to open up a gym in Pittsburgh um, and um, how has that been going for you? Man, that's a crazy story. You know, like mostly like almost like all the the jiu-jitsu guys that came to America, you know, like hands or like, you know, everybody got opportunity and then we think we got opportunity and then we, man, I got screwed so bad. You know, I got invited to come here and and work, work in a project. And and I was supposed to teach in two classes in two places in Crafton and in Cranberry, mm -hmm. and then I moved, bro. I sold my cars, I sold my stuff in Florida, and I moved with my wife and my two-year son. And then I rent a house and Looks like we lost the video connection there a little bit. Hopefully, Danilo can get to a spot where we get the video back so we can keep this interview going. It's great to have him on the show. Danilo has a professional MMA record of 15 and six Luke. and has fought in Luke. the UFC. There you are, okay. Oh, sorry, buddy. No problem, brother. I was filling time by saying that your professional record is 15 and 6. You fought in the UFC, the PFL, the WSOF, and the WEC. But now that we have you back, um, you can continue on with, with what led you to start the gym. Sorry that you're getting uh, cut off there. There you go. All right. Sorry. Uh, so when I, got, when, when I was invited to come over here, that's what I was telling you. Then two days later, the guy that brought me here disappeared on me. And then we kind of freak out what's going on. And then we found out that the guy was kind of taking money out of the company. And then all the, all the other investors freak out. And then the project went, you know, went down the road. And so we had to figure out, me and my wife, I had $12,000 under my, my name, bro. Mm. And then I, and then I look into my wife, I said, listen, this is what's going on. We're going to have to figure out now. We need to open up a place now. <laughs> Bro, I opened up a place with twelve thousand dollars on my. Pie. I don't know how we made it, man. That's God, you know. If people people that don't believe in God is crazy, bro. Well, praise the Lord for your belief in the existence of God. Romans one says that we can look at the creation around us and know that there's a creator, and that everyone can see that there's a God, even if they choose to deny it. So praise yeah. the Lord for that. Um, Amen. So now you've been up and running, and what has been? What has been the most challenging part of running your gym and what has been the best, most rewarding part now four years in to running Indio Dojo? Uh, the hardest part is to be away from my family, you know, my culture and all that. But I live in America for about, you know, I'll say almost 15 years now. So I'm used to it. But still, Florida, I live in Florida for 12 years, you know, and uh, in Florida and Brazil is very alike. Yeah. There's a lot of Brazilians over there. You know, the hard part here is, is that I miss my culture, but also training. You know, uh, I basically train with my students, you know, so the higher the higher rank guy that I have over there is Purple Belt. Uh, so it's hard to get somebody to push you to push you. But the, the, the good thing is the amount of wrestlers, you mm -hmm. know, high level wrestlers yeah. that we have. Yeah. 
And, and, and for me to convert those guys, it, it, it doesn't take long, you know, because no. they, they did so much already. It's just a matter of educate them, you know. Yeah, you have some incredible wrestlers. I had Taylor uh, Cahill. He was talking about Evan uh, DeLong, and there's a bunch of D1 high-level wrestlers training with you, and they all say the same thing, that by training with you, like I was saying during that little break in the video, uh, you've had over 20 professional fights. You have fought in every promotion, plus the Brazilian promotions, plus the U.S. promotions. And so they really feel blessed to be working with you. And obviously, as a all-around well-rounded mixed martial artist, you starting off the guys with a wrestling base is, I'm sure, great for both, which is just wonderful. Um, talking a little bit about the fighters, um, I interviewed Jay Manning from your gym, Dave it from your gym, and Taylor Kayu. Uh, Jay is now off to a 2-0 start, and he comes from more of a kickboxing background. What is it like training somebody like Jay that's more of a striker and not as much of a grappling guy, even though he is good at it and is learning it, versus somebody like a Taylor Cahill who has a wrestling background? Do you prefer anybody that comes in, or do you kind of like working with kickboxers or wrestlers as a base? I like to to build my guys, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to come, oh, I'm my record is five and oh, I like to, yeah. I say, no, you stay where you at, bro. I like to build my one white belts, you know. My yeah. white, like, that's what I want to do. And, and, and it's different, you know. My my job as a coach is to try to make them understand, understand their game first and mm -hmm. and try to feed what, what could be good for them. It's not how I do and how I used to do it. Oh, when I used to fight, that's what I used to do. That you know, that's not my job here. My job is to understand what can be good for them and try to, to you know, just to feed them more information and get them ready. You know, Jay, Jay is a is a major problem. He's a major problem because he's 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 a performer. You know, he's not just a fighter. He's a performer. He's used to being on stage and the lights. Yeah. You know, his bones are super thick, mm -hmm. like his wrist, his, his, his shin, his knees, you know, so he hits really hard, mm -hmm. you know. Um, he's, a, he's a striker, like you said. His background is more football and, and, and tracking. But all those Division One wrestlers that I have here, they eat, they eat shit, man, because, you know, they eat shit with Jay, bro. You can ask them all. You don't ask me, don't, you know, uh, and that, but Jay's like I said, he's a performer, you know, he's cold. He stepped in the cage before the fight. He's like, yeah. you know, he like cold in Brazil, you know, I brought him to Brazil with hot as shit over there. You know, I, I say, Jay, the weather is different. We're not going to have much time to get used to it, you know, so we're going to warm up for 15 minutes. We're not going to spend too much energy and we're going to go straight to, you know, and then he was okay, 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 and he exactly the way the way we're playing, you know. Um, Taylor, in the other hand, Taylor is not only talent, but he's extremely hard worker. Yeah, yeah. You know, super talent. But I, I was a last turn, last grappling tournament we went. I was amazing, man, because I was sitting down by the mat and I was giving structures. Mm -hmm. He was just like I was playing video game. Yeah, control it. Click, 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 click. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a hard skill yeah. to have. Look, mm -hmm. you know, that's a really hard skill to have. He wasn't even looking at me, so I was like, chup, 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 giving information. He was like cutting, cutting, cutting. But his fights were like forty-five seconds max. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he like he was like sharp, uh, but. The, the good thing is he's not only talent, you know, he's a hard worker. You mm -hmm. know, he had the discipline from wrestling, you know, and my, what, what I told him, I said, listen, my job here is not to try to make you guys go crazy sparring, you know. We're going to do very little sparring here. We're going to do a lot of drills. We're going to roll a lot. We're going to wrestle a lot. And we're going to do this much sparring, you know. Mm -hmm. Sparring, bro, I, look, people, like, I hate when people, like, don't, 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 not that I hate, but I hate when people say like, oh, he's a UFC fighter. Oh, he's I'm like, man, listen, 
the wars that I had on the mats is not even compared to what I had in the cage, man. You know, like, and and the and that's what I don't want them to have it, you know, because that's what takes the most out of the fighters. Yeah, you know, uh, that's why I tell my guys, I say, listen, I've been, I came from Brazilian top team, and then I went to American top team, and then I went to Black Zealand, and then, then I'm here. And so I've been in the big gyms with a lot of stars, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's, not a, it's not a fun environment to be. Because once, once people start feeling like that they are more than each other and then there's money coming through. So I told them, I said, listen, for example, I have friends there are in all the teams, like big teams. I don't want to say names, but they are in all the big teams. Yeah. You know, and then there's there's clicks inside the team, man. People yeah. are, oh, you don't watch me train. Oh, that guy trained. Oh, so I'm like, people are fighting each other. I'm like, how, like as a as a coach, look, as a professional coach, I would understand that, you know, getting paid, you're professional. But as a professor, I cannot even understand that. You know, I'm like, yeah. fuck that, man. Yeah. How am I going to train my own guy to fight each other? It's MMA. Yeah. It's not jiu-jitsu, it's not judo, it's not grappling. Right. So my culture is a little different, you know. It's hard for me to understand that. So I, I, I don't really like it. So like I tell the guys, I say, if I could go back on time, mm -hmm. I would do, I will say, 40% of the MMA fights that I had. It, and then I will focus on jiu-jitsu and judo, you know. Yeah. That's what I would do it. Well, I, I think that was a great answer to explain. I, I love asking coaches about their coaching philosophy because I think if somebody wants to train under any coach, they should know what the philosophy is. Some of the coaches' philosophies I don't agree with is we figure out who's a man in practice and we beat the crap out of each other and you know all that stuff. I, I, I don't think that's a, a good philosophy for keeping the brain sharp. You're talking about having a culture where – Every fighter that you've had that's come on this show has talked about loving the culture, being a fan of each other, supporting each other, being a family. And that's what makes a big difference in building people up the right way, as opposed to making it uh, a brutal place, you know? So- um, Look, I'll tell you the truth as, as, look, well, my father was a fighter, you know, my brother, like we all fighters, bro, you know? So, I, I, unfortunately, I was never a champion, you know what I mean? In the MMA, I, w I was able to, you know, to win the Jiu -Jitsu, the blue belt, in the world, the blue belt. I got brown belt. I got third place. I was never able to win the black belt because I was focused on Jiu-Jitsu, on, on MMA at an early age. Um, but, but what I'm saying is I've been, I've, I'm on the mats, man, since I'm a young kid, you know? So, I think the lack of of how can I say of uh, instruction uh, 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 for the for the coaches is huge, you know it's huge. They see on TV and then they think oh, they go on YouTube but they watch what I don't know you know, you know what I mean. They see people doing things, but that that's you need to. There's a reason for each thing you do on the match. Otherwise, you're gonna it, it's it's a fight. I don't want my guys to fight. I want my guys to dominate people and get out without get hurt. Yeah, I tell I tell them I say, listen, if you break a jaw, they not gonna pay you more for that. No, no. If you fight three rounds, you're not gonna get paid more for that. So we need to be wise. You know, we have one body and one body only. You right. know, so if you if you don't take care of your body, you know, the promoters they want to see you know money. They want to see show promotion, blood. Like I want my guys to go in and out at one piece. You know, I'll give an example for like on my last fight. I took I, I took it because I'm crazy. You know, <laughs> I was selling my brother. I was I like oh, Yuri. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. light went off. So I was trying to sell Yuri to to PFL, right? Because I I used to manage a lot of the guys, but now I don't like to manage people no more. I manage only my guys. So I I. Uh, and then I was talking to Ray, and then he's like, what about you? I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm in shape. But I had just opened my gym, bro. I was yeah. training with the white belts in here, my, my white belts holding pads and stuff. 
And then I start, I, I, I finally connect with Coach Tommy Ankelo. He is a master. He's a boxing master. He's a, he's, a, he's a pearl that we have here in Pittsburgh. So I start training with him and I got to learn a lot. But I was training boxing to fight MMA, you know? So I was sparring a lot, a lot, a lot of sparring. And um, two, 10 days before my, my fight, I went to get my, 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 my blood work, my CAT scan and everything. So then the doctor came and said, ask, she called me in and I said, listen, there's some scar tissues in here on your brain. You got to, you know, we got to follow up. I was having fucking mad, mad headaches, bro. Yeah. You know, and then that was 10 days before my fight. Mm. And then my dad was a fighter, like I said, you know, my dad has over 200 Valley Tudor fights, yeah, you wow. know. So then my dad, my dad now has Parkinson, yeah. dementia, and yeah. Alzheimer's. So he has all three, bro. Mm. So I was like, on that fight, I wasn't there. I wasn't even there. Fuck my light, man. I'm inside the car, sorry. So after, and then I, 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 uh, I got knocked out in like, I don't know, 40 seconds. I got, it destroyed my ribs. It broke my ribs in the front, in the back. So after that, I was like, man, I'm out, man. I'm out. I lost it. You know what I mean? Cause you, lo I like, I was scared of my brain, my own health. You know, I'm like, I see my mom changing my dad's diaper, you know what I mean? And I'm like, fuck that. I don't want that to my wife and to my, you know, to my kid to be seen that. So, th so then I, that's when I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm out. I'm going to step out. I'm going to focus on jujitsu. But because of my career, you know, dude, I look, I'll, I'll, I'll name a few guys that I went to war. Just so you know, okay. I'll, let, let's go, let's go, let's go. Black Zealands. Yeah. Alistair Overeem, yeah. uh, Rashad, yeah. Tyrone Spong, yeah. Anthony Johnson, Gilbert Burns. Mm -hmm. Dude, like, dude, for, besides the guys that you guys don't know, like Bigfoot Silva, <laughs> Bada Hari, bro, like I support all these guys. So now I'm paying the dues, you know what I mean? Because my body's all fucked. Yeah. That's why I tell the guy, I say, man, that's not the goal. The goal is to fight in front of people. We don't want to fight in the gym. There's no money in the gym. There's nobody watching. Well, so what's the point? You know, and that, and what I understand that there's a lot of coaches that they, they, unfortunately, fuck, man. Unfortunately, they, they, they didn't have the, the, the experience. You know what I mean? They did look, I, I, I learned from Minotauro, Minotauro, Irona, Murilo Bustamante, you know, and then so forth, bro. Like coach, co wrestling coaches. I have Olympic coaches. You know, Kenny Monday, like boxing coaches, like kickboxing, bro. You name it. So I was able to learn with like real, real good coaches. So that's the difference that I have. That I think I bring it to the table. You know, for those young fighters. You know, I was able to learn from the source. You know, I'm not a young kid that got certified online and trying to open up a business, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm just trying to to bring the best of, that I can to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is a tremendous city. People here is amazing, you know, and I feel that with with what I what the information that I can bring it to the table and the talents that we have here is is only a matter of time. Mm -hmm. Well, and speaking of Pittsburgh, let's talk a little bit about what it's meant to you to have 247 Fighting Championships come in and really establish themselves as a great promotion in Pittsburgh. What have you liked to see? 247 just did a back-to-back -back card on the same day of May 22nd. You had fighters on it. What do you like about 247 putting on fights right there in the Pittsburgh area to really bring MMA up in Pittsburgh? Dude, Ryan, oh man, Ryan is killing. He's killing. I told him, I said, listen, your show looks amazing. I lived in Florida for all those years, and the only shows that were going, you know, toe to toe, like better than yours here was UFC, Strike Force, you know, uh, uh, and Elite XC uh, that we used to have. Like even Titan, Titan, man, not even close to, to what 24 7 is doing. I guarantee you that, you know. Uh, Ryan is doing a tremendous job. I'm happy to to be, you know, have my guys fighting for him. 
and I look forward for a, for a long term relationship. Great, that's absolutely great. I know I know Ryan Middleton really wants the gyms in the Pittsburgh area to be able to depend on two four seven to be able to trust it and to really be able to showcase the gyms. You know, some great gyms. You being a, a, a top level gym in the area. Speaking of that, what would you like to see? come to Pittsburgh, particularly through 247, that's not just MMA. What's one of the visions you'd like to see happen in the Pittsburgh area to really showcase BJJ? Brother, look, as a, as a leader of my team, you know, I believe that I should do my best to help, you know, spread the jiu-jitsu into, into Pittsburgh, right? Uh, 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 it's, it's as I like, like, as, like uh, uh, with that being said, I think with I had an idea to do like a four man tournament, six man tournament, whatever, whoever you know the case may be. I thought four man tournament because we'll probably be the four biggest teams in you know, right? So, uh, uh I reach out to Ryan and say, Ryan, I think we have uh, we have a case here, you know, grappling is only growing. You know, and then MMA and grappling, they are brothers. Yeah. They they don't compete. You know, people that watch MMA watch grappling, vice versa. Mm -hmm. So I said, listen, if I fight, if I fight here, I know I can sell a lot of tickets. Yeah. A lot. I have almost 300 students in my gym. And if I sell, if I fight, they all going to come and they're going to bring mom. They're going to bring grandma. You know, they for real. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. what I said, what the idea that I had is I said, listen, let's do King of the Bird, mm. right? Yeah. Let's put four man tournament. Each one put 10 grand, right? Out of the pocket and winner takes all, you know? So that's a big payday. You know, I think, look, they all active. Um, uh, Lou is active. He's always competing. You know, he's in shape. Uh... Isaac is in, is competing. He's in shape. Who else? Well, uh, uh, Stout is also the Wilkins, competing. The Wilkin brothers. The Wilkins. Which one? The Wilkins. Mike, the older, the older Wilkins. Mike Wilkins. He was a he's a black belt, I believe. It. Uh, uh, this one I don't know. I know the Matt Factory guys and the. Oh, Stout. Okay. okay. And Stout. Stout was also. I I actually text them. You know, they all agree to it I, you know so it's only a matter of us make it happen um we didn't get into details as far as money that's a personal idea sure. you know i sure. think i think if we do that we'll sorry we'll bring more credit for the you know we can put more people would say what well, why these guys are falling for forty thousand dollars you know because the big leagues are not paying that for this for gordon mm -hmm. ryan they, they're not paying all that money for these guys you know, so uh, I think will be a big uh, way to create a buzz, you know, goes because look, if I if 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 I fight and then I put my my major so my social media to work to promote this thing, match factory fight, promote on their social media and we're going to going to going to create a, a nice buzz in the Pittsburgh area that will definitely drive more students through the gym because that's my goal. I told him and said, listen, $10,000, right? If I sign six people, I got that $10,000 back over the year. So that's an investment. If you see that, you know, as a businessman, oh. it's an investment. So win or lose, listen, people say, oh, you think you want to do because you think you're going to win. Of course, I think I'm going to win. Oh, Otherwise, sure. I wouldn't do it. Sure. But nothing's guaranteed. Yeah, I can't, I, I, I can lose, bro. You know what I mean? I just competed over this weekend and I lost. I, I lost. So mm -hmm. guess what? Guess what? You that's people like I I trust me, you know, so I'll throw 10 grand on the table and I think it will be nice. You know, my students will be proud of me because I'll be putting my, you know, in the line for them, you know, so then they will appreciate they will buy tickets, they'll buy per per view, and I can get this money back. You know, it's a business. It's a business, and then we are going to promote our business. You know, and then promote our business. We promote jujitsu, which that's what that's the main goal. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a great idea. I hope 
I hope there's a buzz that starts. I want this video, this interview to kind of create some of that buzz. Hopefully it gets shared a lot on social media and gets people talking about the need. And, and I know Ryan uh, would love to see uh, a jujitsu under 247 become an event, you know, host events for jujitsu in addition to MMA. And uh, Ryan, like you had said, is always looking to grow bigger and do bigger things. And um, and I, I think it's a great idea. It's a lot of what you said. You're a businessman, but you also you also know that it's important to show your your people, your athletes, that you're also still competing and learning and challenging yourself. So it's it's a great idea. I hope one day soon to be able to be there in person and being able to say, hey, I remember when Danilo came on MMA Fancast and talked about. It. I mean, that would be wonderful. So you will. And we're gonna go, and we're gonna go have a beer after. Well, that would be that would be fantastic. Um, before we wrap up, I, I you've been in every every big fight, every big event. What is what is your most? It doesn't have to be your best win. It doesn't have to be your 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 opponent that people would know. What's your favorite moment in, in your personal experience of having twenty one MMA fights, professional MMA fights? Uh, brother, I think my most memory, memorable fight was against Cassiano Teacher okay. in Brazil. Mm. This kid was the number one ranked in Brazil at the time. Uh, and then I was living in America. And then my one of my good friends and professor, Master Amori Bitetti, he had a, a, a show called Bitetti Combat. Mm. And he was running one in my hometown. And then he invited me and my brother to set to fight because he knew we sold we sell a lot of tickets at home. So then he offered me a guy that he's you know what I mean like a good fight. Yeah. But I said, I said, man, I ain't fighting this dude, bro. Because if shit goes south, I'm gonna have to retire. Um, you know what I mean? I rather I rather fight somebody. I don't I don't care about losing, bro. Like. I, 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 but I like to fight tough dudes, you know what I mean? I always was, was like that. And then he gave me this guy and then was crazy because he's not a big dude, but he, he all his, his, his wins were submission in the first round, but guillotine. So he has a fucking tight guillotine. So I was ready for that. But when when we show up for this for the wins, my brother opponent, bro, he was huge. I was like, shit, man, they, they set up my brother. You know what I mean? They set up my brother. I'm like, fuck. And then, and then my brother, they put, for some reason, they put my brother right before me. Yeah. And then that was probably the worst experience I ever had. You know, that's exactly what I told the Cahills, bro. I said, listen, you then should never fight in the same day. It's yeah. too hard because your brother's going to be in the cage and you're going to be there. Even you here, you're gonna, your head's going to be there, so it's not going to fly. If you lose, you lose. If you win, you might win too, but, you know, it's, it's no good. So that day, that night was a special night because I had my mom, my dad, you know, friends that I was on the walk into the cage. I was like, oh, my God, that guy's from preschool. Oh, that guy from, oh, my God. I was seeing people from, like, 15 years, yeah. and I was able to knock him out. My brother fought right before me. It was a war. And then I fought, and then he won, and then I I was able to knock this guy out in the first round, and and then that was nice, you know. Uh, besides that, you know, I think I think like the big leagues, in my opinion, is just an illusion, bro. You know, waste of time, bro. <laughs> okay. You know, sure. swear to you, man. My brother Yuri was probably the second at the time. He was the second second youngest guy to find UFC. Yeah. Or and stuff. I was like, I was like, I was so mad. I was like, why are we letting this kid go right now? He's not ready. He's not ready. You know. Uh, but at that time, I didn't control his career and stuff. But you know. But you know, you live and learn. You know, the best thing is now I can support my guys in a different way. You know. Absolutely, and it's been absolutely incredible to have you on the show. Uh, first of, I hope many times. You can come back, talk about if there's a, when there's a BJJ competition that you're in, I'd love to have you back on. And obviously, uh, probably, you know, when 247 
fights are having your fighters on. It's been incredible to have not only somebody with your fight career, I think you've made it very clear to know that you care really a lot about how you are as a coach now. It's not just the stuff you did in the past in your MMA career. It's, it's what type of a coach you're, you're doing now. And hopefully you're coaching your fighters to avoid some of the stuff that you wish you hadn't done in your career. So I think that's really humble for coaches. You mentioned early that, you know, some coaches, I've seen it, I've been around it where some coaches only coach for what worked for them. And they're just trying to make a bunch of mini me's and that doesn't work. You got to coach. Those are frustrated dudes, man. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You got to coach what's going to make them their fighter, not you. What, you know, so it's been incredible having you on the show. I hope this video gets a lot of buzz going on about your grappling tournament, BJJ tournament idea. And uh, it's been an honor. So thanks for taking time out of your busy day, running the gym, having a, a wife and a kid. So it's been great having you on. All the best wishes to you and every fighter in your gym. And via con to you. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate it. You got Look forward it. To, to be back here as many times as we, we possibly can. That would be great. I, I look forward to having you back on as well. Have a great night. You too, my brother. Awesome. Got it. All right. Bye-bye.